This was Prophecy 26. It was a word given to me, also Elizabeth Sherry Elijah, um, on January 1st, 1999, at 9 o'clock p.m. I was always told to record the time also. And um, I just want to add a, a note about this prophecy. The audio is missing. I never dreamed that audio was ever going to be put on the Internet. So, unfortunately, many things are missing now. And so I am re-recording it and asking Abba Yahweh to give me back the same anointing he originally gave, it, gave to me when he spoke it for us. But in 1999, many things were happening. And we were praying. And Yahweh had us praying um, for mercy, you know. He wanted us to be able to, and we were doing it, that his hand of judgment would be delayed on 1999. And he did hold back the judgment for America at that time, just like Jonah's judgment was delayed. And in 2001, it looked like his judgment was going to be hitting America again. For originally, I was a prophet sent to America. I lived in America. I was born in America. And um, But then I got promoted from heaven, and he called me a prophet to the nations. He was calling me a prophet to the nations even in um, 1996, 1995. But I had not even left, um, well, no further than Canada at that time. And then, of course, now I'm an international prophet to the nations. But at that time, as I said, I, I was interceding and praying a great deal. And many other prophecies were given in America. And so we pray judgment will be delayed again with our prayer intercessory warriors and, a, and in 2001. And it was delayed. And, well, now we're in 2012. Folks, I don't know if it's going to be delayed anymore. The world has become a Sodom and Gomorrah, and there's very few of us who are even objecting anymore. This title of this is called Hear Me, Fear Me, and Believe Me. And the only thing about praying that judgment is delayed is we hold back the coming of our Yahushua. I don't know about those who are listening to me, to me right now, all of you listening. I know I'll have enemies listening too, so you're certainly not looking for him to come. You're looking for the Antichrist to come. But those who are the true followers and worshippers of Yeshua HaMashiach, we long for our Messiah. We long for our soon coming bridegroom. We long. We, um, we weep for each and every day that we're away from our home in heaven. We're not asking to die, but we're asking to be raptured up in the sky to be by our beloved Yeshua's side. But in the meantime, we've got a job to do or we wouldn't be here. So let this word encourage you. It was originally given to me. Prophecy 26, mind you. <laughs> and just Prophecy 120 was just released. Actually, there's 121 that hasn't been released yet. And 20 or more prophecies that haven't been also. Because I wait for Yah's timing. Hear me, fear me, believe me. As I said, take the words given in January 1st, 1999. And just know that you can put 2012 in there, and it still applies. My beloved, hear my words and instructions for the coming days of 1999 and onward. I hear my children cry out, I am not deaf nor blind. My hand is not too short to deliver you from the trials to come. Just walk by faith and not by sight. Your natural ears and eyes will fail or deceive you. Listen not to the prognosticators of doom that say I will forsake my baby's bride, chosen ones or elect. Stand on my word, believe it, and say in your heart, Yahweh said it, I believe it, and that settles it. In 1999, the words fear of flying will take on a new meaning. My babies and bride will not fear. Rumors of war will no longer be rumors and will be more than one country at a time. I see and I hear my babies and my children. I feel your pain as you listen and run in terror in every direction, or you are overwhelmed and paralyzed as if in shock and your faith draining daily at the world's news reports. Many of my little ones are in a panic, for they say, I cannot hear Yahweh's voice. 
They weep and wail and fear and pray. Please, Yahweh, tell me where to go and what to do. Oh, my children, hear me. You have not heard what to do or where to go yet, for it's not yet time. Tarry a while longer. I will speak and confirm to your spirit in many different ways. I have not forsaken my beloved baby's bride, chosen ones or elect, nor will I. Your names are engraved on my palms. Many of my children are trying to calculate my next move. Have you not realized my ways or above the way you do things? This is why I am the great I am, and I apologize to no one for anything I do. In 1999, you will do well to learn as you should have learned long ago, to lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me. Ask of me, and your heavenly Father and almighty God Yahweh will direct your path. Stop trying to understand me. It is not your place to understand me. Rather, it is I that understands your every thought, action, motive, intentions of the heart. You but think a thought, and before you speak, I know what you will say. I am the potter. You are the clay. Stop arguing with me. Many of you are making decisions based on fear. I have not given you the fear of your heavenly Father forsaking or forgetting my children. Satan has given you this fear. Along with spirits of depression and hopelessness, keep your hope alive. Keep your faith alive by renewing your mind. Read my word, all that I have done in times of old. Since the times of old I have taken care of my children who serve and worship and try to obey me, have I not? Many spiritual leaders frighten you with facts, how my children are tortured and murdered for my sake. But I say unto you now, yes, they are martyrs. I have always had beloved children willing to lay down their lives for my sake. I always will have martyrs. Their blood is so precious to me. As my son willingly gave his life at Calvary, so these also spill their blood for my glory. I am who I am, and I change not, neither for man nor woman or your seasons nor times. I will bless those who are a blessing unto me. Curse those that are a curse unto me. Those who bring me shame shall live eternally cut off from their creator in pain and anguish untold. Again, in 1999 and onward, a new meaning to the above words. I will bless those who are a blessing unto me and curse those that are a curse unto me. These words will be felt by all. Hear me, fear me, believe me. I do not lie. What I prophesy will come to pass in 1999. I am who I am. Almighty God Yahweh, the Almighty, Alpha and the Omega, whom is the Holy Trinity. I will reward my true children who diligently seek to please me in all ways. I will protect my children in 1999 with their coming trials and tribulations for my glory's sake, not their glory's sake. I will protect all those who insist on being holy as I am holy, live in holy, think in holy, speak in holy, a living witness to the heathen. My bride, my children, you have been set apart for Yahweh and Yahushua's glory alone. I delight in blessing those who do these things. My two sheep and lambs will never have any other God before me. My bride will not compromise in any way that which I have decreed as holy. My bride will honor my commandments, including one that has been overlooked by multitudes. It has been misunderstood and mocked, or the spirit of rebellion has entered in hardened hearts. Yet my bride will now be held accountable as some of you will hang your heads in shame, not knowing how you grieve my Ruach HaKadosh by not keeping my Sabbath day holy. Oh, but I can see you shaking your head and saying, Not I. Surely you speak to another, for I attend church services on Sunday. Every Sunday some even boast. Oh, but my darling little ones, it is you who have grieved my Ruach HaKadosh. For you did not read my word, Exodus 31, 12 to 18. And the Lord Yah spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath shall ye heap. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. 
everyone that defiles it shall be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath day of rest. Holy to the Lord, Yahweh. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout the generations, for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, I, Yahweh, your Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai two tablets of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of Yahweh. Your work must be done in six days, but on the seventh you are to rest, Friday sundown until Saturday sundown. Pray, and I will show you how to set these days apart and teach you to rest in me, and you will hear my voice. Be encouraged and refreshed in a new way, blessed and protected against your enemies. Did I not say I am the great God? I am, and I and my word change not. For no man, nor woman, or time, nor season. Your spiritual leaders who have not taught you this must repent. Turn away from this evil of doing things man's way with man-made doctrines. Again I say, my ways are higher than your ways. Flee from any spiritual leaders refusing to teach my holy word without compromising. Again I say, flee! It is far better to learn the truth from this handmaiden than die in that lie. Practice now to keep my Sabbath day holy. The hard times are approaching and you will be held accountable for what you know now. You no longer have any excuses. Once again, you who are my true babies and bride will never have any other gods before me. My bride will honor me by keeping my Sabbath holy. Say not which Sabbath day, for I plainly told you it is not Sunday. My elect have known it all along. Every day you are to worship and acknowledge me. But on the Sabbath day, Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, you are to rest. Learn of me. For I jealously want you on that day to only be mine, on the day I call my Sabbath. The world deems it foolish and thinks it's their day to sin and party or work. Instead, my people will refuse to work and party, proving that the days of men are foolishness and telling my people to be a Sabbath keeper is foolish. Yet this is my holy day, and Satan has used your religious system to mock me on that day. I want to encourage you, those who are called Sabbath keepers, you are my true bride. Your aroma is pleasing to my nostrils, but being a Sabbath keeper alone will not save you. It must be combined with accepting Yahushua as Messiah. As the sinful world you live in continues to teach rebellion, trashing or editing my Ten Commandments, as in the days of Moses, I will show what I do with a people with a rebellious heart. Multitudes claiming to be believers in Yahushua and Yahweh are breaking the two tablets of stone once again as Moses did, but this time in another way. For the rebellious children break my heart when they break my commandments and say keeping the Sabbath holy is no longer important. The tablets of stone are the stony, cold hearts far from me, indifferent to my commandments. Spiritual leaders are rewriting my commandments that I gave Moses, mocking them, breaking them as they chose. Playing God as to what was written and what their idea behind the meaning of my commandments are. What is a commandment? It is just that. A command. A law. Orders decreed from heaven from Yahweh. The same commands on earth are followed in heaven. Soldiers take orders from the commander in chief. Yet my soldiers question me when I give commandments. Why is it so? Am I not the same great God I am that part of the Red Sea? Am I not the same great God I am that provided for Noah and Moses? Did I not send an angel to shut the mouth of the lion for Daniel? Did I not protect Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace? Can you believe that I will do it again? It is the aroma of my sweet anointing that kept them from smelling like smoke. 
Pray and believe in faith that will keep you from bowing down to other false gods. Put me first in all your ways as these three Hebrew children did. Am I not the same great God I am that used a woman named Deborah as a judge to defeat thousands taking my enemies to the grave and the pits of hell? Am I not the same great God I am that used a shepherd boy and one small rock to cause Goliath to forever fall? Am I not the same great God I am that cursed evil Pharaoh I created him for destruction to prove I am who I am no one oppresses or attempts to possess my chosen ones my elect who worship and serve me putting Yahweh and Yahushua above all else for those who curse my elect I shall curse and those who dare to kill and torture and oppress and possess and attempt to silence my baby's bride chosen ones or elect I will repay them as in the days of David and Goliath, as in the days of the evil Pharaoh. This coming year of 1999, which you have read about in the past, I shall do it again. You will see my great hand of wrath or mercy. All will see the reality of which God they have served. These spiritual leaders that are apostles and prophets and teachers and preachers and evangelists that say it does not matter which day is called a Sabbath, Teach my people a lie. Those that say Yahushua is a Sabbath, but in the next breath condemn themselves by saying, Every day we are to worship Yahweh and Yahushua. This is true. Ah, but listen. For the next word to test the spirit that speaks to those professing to know me, and yet do not know me. Now is their chance to repent and teach the truth. For they say any day can be the Sabbath. I say unto you now, Satan has stolen my day of worship and rest and substituted a day for convenience of mankind. A day man decreed and now again writes orders to worship and rest on what is now called Sunday. But I decree and my chosen and elect know the day of rest. It is not meant to be a convenience to mankind, but a blessing to mankind. And I, Yahweh, it is now a day that you just fit into your busy work and play schedule. No, it is not a day that you just fit into your busy work and play schedule. They have even changed the beginning and ending of the week to suit their schedule. For even those who don't accept my son Yahushua as their Messiah, accept and honor my Sabbath day as rest and keep it holy. And they have more favor in my eyes than you who call yourself mine, and yet accept my son as Messiah, but dare to rewrite my commandments. Hear me, fear me, believe me. Vengeance is mine, saith Yahweh. You who are under the spiritual leadership that refuse to teach my word without omitting a jot or a tittle, beware. Flee from those churches. From this day forward, you will be sowing seed in the shallow, hard ground. My Ruach HaKodesh will be taken from these places. What you did in ignorance, I will forgive. I will forgive your spiritual leaders if you will repent and teach what is right. This coming year of 1999, many churches will be sitting desolate, for judgment has come to the house of the Lord. Hear me, fear me, believe me. I am not a God to be mocked. When I had finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, I gave gave him the two tablets of stone inscribed by my finger, the laws of Yahweh. Yet why have so many believed the lie that Yahushua canceled the Ten Commandments? Many teach breaking the Ten Commandments is no longer sin. After all, Yahushua paid the price, they say. These evil spiritual leaders twist my word, teach my people keeping the Ten Commandments is impossible. Don't forget that I put my Ruach HaKodesh within you. That provides a way of escape with every temptation that besets you. Other evil teachers say to break the least of the commandments is not sin. They forget that breaking one is to break all. Man number the commandments one to ten. I say, why do you say you love me and not obey me? Would I give you commandments that are impossible to keep? Keep my commandments. Put them into practice. Stray neither to the right nor to the left. For truly love your Creator and your Messiah. Yahushua is the essence of the law. My babies and bride, 
all have broken my laws and none can say otherwise or they lie. That is before you accepted Yahushua as Messiah. Now you have my Ruach HaKadosh Holy Spirit who convicts and reminds you when your feet stray to the left or right. In this year 1999, the godly shall radiate my presence in their speech, actions. Even their faces shall shine forth on my Ruach HaKadosh. Also in 1999, from this time forward... The ungodly will become more ungodly. These will become like under the sun of perdition and will manifest a radiance also like the angel of light, once called Lucifer, or the countenance of the ungodly shall become as a dark fog. As my son approaches earth, the dividing of my sheep and Satan's goats will become more evident. The earth quakes in great fear of the coming judgment. Hell spews forth molten lava. The lake of fire is my wrath that overflows. Hell is kindled by my wrath. The river of life flows forth from my throne with great love and mercy. For my baby's bride, chosen ones in elect, 1999 will be a year full of deliverance for those who put me first. My children will know great blessings for boldly keeping my Sabbath solely and who know the importance of keeping my commandments. My children also know when they sin against me and repent, turning away from that sin. Only Yahushua's holy blood shed at Calvary will wash them clean again. In 1999, my baby's bride, chosen ones and elect, will see my loving hand of deliverance reaching forth from heaven and see Yahweh, Yahushua, and Ruach HaKadosh deliver my baby's bride, chosen ones and elect, doing what was otherwise thought impossible. Listen and learn how in 1999, learn not to trust in the natural, but instead trust that Yahweh and Yahushua will provide for you supernaturally. I, the Lord your God, Yahweh, am not confined to do things by man's way of providing for you. For I have all of heaven at my disposal. For those of you who lack faith, can you explain why the sun is hot? What causes the ice to be cold? I will prove what I have spoken will happen. I am speaking this through my true prophets and apostles, and this is only the beginning. Starting in 1999, I will speak forth bolder and louder and more frequently. As my son Yahushua approaches, none will be able to say I have not warned. Signs in the sky and fearing what none thought to fear. Even atheists will shudder at what I'm going to do in 1999 and 2000. But remember, not all the wrath you will see will be coming from me. Satan is very angry and his time is short. Satan will send his servants forth and steal, kill, and destroy in a greater way. What Satan cannot accomplish in Satan's name, he will deceive and accomplish using my son, Yahushua. Satan will use the name of Jesus to deceive billions in the Great Tribulation. Satan will even deceive using my name, Yahweh. You, my baby's bride, chosen ones and elect, will recognize the evil done in the name of science, government, and religion. Hear and fear, ye enemies of the gospel of Yahushua. I will always have a people. My baby's bride, chosen ones and elect, when I say flee, it will be as when I open the Red Sea, and I will show you the way. Do not fear. Just flee as Lot fled. And do not look back. At the end of 1998, many thought this was a hard year. You who toasted one another and celebrated the end of the year of 1998, counting down the minutes till it was gone, do not know I counted also, holding back my rage for the sake of souls. One day you will long to see 1998 again. You will be sorry you threw my blessings away. You will regret you did not obey. You will regret... You did not sow seed for the troubled days ahead. My true children will arise in victory, for they have given their all. They hold nothing back. Even if need be, they will give me their lives. For at last, my baby's bride, chosen once and elect, will see the hand of Yahweh and Yahushua deliver and slay the Goliaths of this world, causing their enemies to flee in seven different directions. My children who can trust me in this New year of 1999, in a world seemingly filled with chaos, and yet in that chaos, my children will sense the peace that passes all understanding. My babies, bride, chosen ones, and elect will have more blessings, wisdom, knowledge, revelations to know how to evade the enemy's traps. My children will be as a Joshua and watch the enemies and their walls of evil come tumbling down upon these evil ones. 
this year, 1999, at Midpoint especially, you will see and remember what has been spoken this day through this handmaiden on 1231, 1998. One more thing. Although this handmaiden is of Jewish descent, both mother and father, and I speak this not for her benefit but for others, it is not whether you are a Jew or a Gentile that will save you, but rather have you accepted my son Yahushua as Messiah? Have you had a blood transfusion from Yahushua's blood shed at Calvary? Do not be like the synagogues of Satan, who do profess to be mine, and yet do not keep my laws and Sabbaths, and have not truly received the gift of Yahushua at Calvary. My Jewish people keep my laws and Sabbaths, and yet they refuse Yahushua as Messiah. There will be no other Messiah. You wait in vain at the cost of your souls. I speak this boldly through this handmaiden, who I will send to deliver this message in person to Israel and Jerusalem and other parts of the world, in my love, not only hers, as I have sent my other servants forth to say this to the Jewish people. You love and worship and serve Yahweh. You even try to keep my laws and feasts and Sabbath day. Yet this alone cannot save anyone, be they Jew or Gentile. Be warned, you're only loving half of me. If you're not acknowledging and accepting my son Yahushua as the only Messiah, both for Jew and Gentile, the only door to heaven, the only intercessor before I, Yahweh, the Father, all your sacrifices have been done in vain. For all those who have not accepted my gift at Calvary, Yahushua is his only name. Do not hate my messengers. I send forth with this message. Rather love my messengers, for loving you enough for the sake of your souls, has spoken the truth in boldness despite the cost of persecution. It would have been easier for them to stay silent, but I would not allow their lips to be silent, for I love my Jewish people. What will it take for you to see your God Yahweh's gift I gave at Calvary? Satan seeks to have lawmakers to silence my messengers and sent with this message. Their very lives are in danger. But there has always been a great cost to speak my words without compromise. 1999 will be a year my true servants will stand and say to the world, I have decided to follow Yahweh, Yahushua, and the Ruach HaKadosh, preaching the word in season and out of season, in lack or abundance, in truth, with no fear and no compromise. There is a spiritual leader with another spiritual leader yet to come who sits on a great throne. He wears a crown of jewels and holds a scepter in his hand. People bow low to him and worship and reverence him. Laws are passed by this unholy man-made king that was created by the Roman Empire. And in boldness, through my handmaiden, I say in 1999, you will see this so-called unholy king rewrite my commandments putting another god before the people. This time a woman who is to be a goddess. She is said to be part of the Godhead, but is not. Beware when they attach the name Mary to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Beware of the doctrines of men. There is but one Godhead, the great God I am, Yahweh, who is your creator and heavenly father, and Yahushua, my son, who is your Messiah, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, none other. There are no intercessors in heaven. Only coming to me in the name of Yahushua will I hear you. For those who refuse to believe this, what will you do when you find all your sacrifices, prayers, and other saints' names have been in vain? It is Satan that has deceived you. For you have put other gods before me that are no gods at all. What will you say when you stand before Yahweh and Yahushua when you find out there is no purgatory, only heaven or hell, and you cannot pray anyone out of hell, no matter how many candles you light. You cannot be forgiven, no matter how many Hail Marys you say. At the time, at the hour of your death, stop calling on the name of my son's mother, Mary, she cannot help you. Only the name of Yahushua can. It was not her blood shed at Calvary, but my son Yahushua's blood shed at Calvary. This is the only atonement for sin. My beloved children, who are my babies, bride, chosen ones, and elect, the heathen calls you narrow-minded when you say there is but one way to God the Father's throne, and in one name, the name of Yahushua, that I will answer prayers. You tell them, yes, 
I am narrow-minded, for the word of Yahweh cannot lie, and Yahweh says only in the name of Yahushua will I hear your prayers, and the pathway to heaven is narrow, and the road to hell is broad. You tell them, it is a broad-minded that will end up suffering in agony, first in hell, then in the lake of fire, because you love Yahweh and Yahushua, and them. Warn them, my children. Love them enough to incur their wrath. Love them enough to be an offense. I, Yahweh, you should recognize, speak the truth. The majority don't want to hear, and we are an offense to many. 1999 is not only a year for great deliverance, for it will come to my people. Remember, nine is a number symbolizing deliverance, and you have it three times. Three times is the number of my trinity. Therefore, you have complete harmony. Father, Son, and the Rak HaKadosh. Beware. Satan will take 1999 and reverse the direction, turning it upside down, and it will be 6661. As he takes everything holy and counterfeits it by doing things backwards, perverting even my holy prayers in his satanic services. So this year, 1999, will be full of satanic power. You will see manifested in the power of Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, the unholy trinity, using science, government, and religion, and man-made doctrines to deceive many. Satan will use science and say it is being used for good. Instead, beware, it is being used for evil. Be warned again. This is also for the government, religion, and charities. Evil will be done in the name of God and worse. My beloved, you cannot say I did not send my prophets and apostles to warn you, so you would not fall into the enemy's snares. For the people who live to see the end of 1999, even the atheists and heathen will have to admit, signs, wonders, and miracles, delivering power, followed all those that believe, serve, hung on to their faith, obey in me, because of this multitude will be saved. For they kept their faith in Yahweh Yahushua, and boldly spoke out that their God would save them. Because of their boldness, multitudes will hear and be saved. Because of this, multitudes were here and be damned. For the heathen will still deny Yahushua as Messiah and be held accountable even after Yahushua approves his delivering power for all eyes to see. Say not as the heathen say, Happy New Year. For the heathens know not what is to come. But oh, for my baby's bride, chosen ones and elect, you have nothing to fear. The heathen's woes are not my children's woes. I am the God of the past, present, and future. And all my children have to do is be as a little lamb or a sheep. Trust the shepherd. They do not worry or fret. They have faith in the good shepherd providing for them. That's all I ask of you. Hold on tight to your faith in 1999 and beyond. Don't let go. I will deliver you.